It's me, Ansine, and this over here is... Ariel! Hi everyone! And we're so excited that you could join us here today. Absolutely. We're going to have so much fun exploring the Bible together and getting to know Jesus a bit better. And we're starting a series on discipline. So let's check out, we'll check out what that means exactly. Yeah, that's very exciting. Um, discipline is something that we all need in our lives. And this week, um, Antonio will be chatting with us. So uh, before we get into that, we're going to do a little icebreaker. So we're going to play two truths and one lie. And how this works is Ariel is going to think of two truths and one lie and she's going to tell all the things to me and then I need to guess what is true and what's a lie and then we, we're going to swap it out as well. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. All right, so Ariel, what are your three statements? Ooh. Number one, I have traveled to six countries. Number two, I had a pet rabbit. Number three, I did Hebrew dancing when I was little. Oh, I think, think the lie is that you had a pet rabbit. <laughs> That's correct. Yes. <laughs> Yay. All right. Good okay. job. I did not have a pet rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My turn. My first dog's name is Bonnie. Okay. Okay. Statement number two. I'm allergic to baked beans. Statement number three. I visited nine countries in three weeks a few years ago. Hmm. I think statement number three is correct because you traveled quite a bit. I don't think you're allergic to baked beans. That is correct. Okay. I'm not allergic to baked beans, but I pretend that I am <laughs> when it's being safe because like I don't like it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Anyways. <laughs> so guys, that was a lot of fun, but we're going to get ready to worship God now. Absolutely. And worship can be fun too, but we have to remember that the purpose of worship is to focus on God and praise Him and glorify Him. So let's focus and get ready to worship together. Do you hear that? I do hear that. I think that is our worship song. There's an ocean of doubt in front of me And my back's up against the wall I know it's an opportunity For my God to show His heart And it may look impossible in the natural But I know that it's not Cause I know that my
had so much fun worshipping God. Did you do too? Absolutely. <laughs> But I think right now we should take a moment to just pause and be present. We can have a lot of fun sometimes and just rush through things. So let's slow down, take a few deep breaths and get ready for today's lesson. Life can get really busy, but so can our minds. So let's take a moment to pause, breathe and focus our minds on God before we go into today's lesson. So pause whatever you're doing just for a moment and sit still as we take time to breathe. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Take another deep breath in and another deep one out. Breathe in again and out. You can breathe normally now as you close your eyes and allow me to pray for you. Lord, we are so blessed to be able to call you Father. Thank you that you always have something to teach us. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you would help us focus as we listen to today's lesson. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hi, my name is Panwa. I'm in grade eight at Brescia and I am an entrepreneur. I recently started my business late last year selling scrunchies. In business, you have to be disciplined for many things. You have to be disciplined with your products. For example, in my case, you have to be disciplined to make all your products and to reach your goal. You have to be disciplined with your packaging and to find the correct packaging that suits your products. And you also have to be disciplined to keep trying even if it doesn't work at first. I had to keep trying new measurements to find the perfect measurements for my scrunchies. You also have to be disciplined on planning out everything and planning your finances. Business requires a lot of discipline. Thank you. That was awesome. Are you ready to go into today's Bible lesson? I'm ready. Let's, Let's check, check it out. Our scripture reading for this week is from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 to 8. Read along with me or listen while I read. Have nothing to do with pointless and silly myths. Rather, train yourself in godliness. For the training of the body has limited benefit, but godliness is beneficial in every way since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. So, what do you think of when you think of the word discipline? Do you think of getting detention because you didn't do your homework? Or maybe you think of having your phone taken away because you disobeyed your mom and your dad. Well, discipline can mean being corrected when we've done something wrong and facing some punishment, but it can also mean training. So taking small steps each day to do something big. Or discipline is something that you can do today that your future self will thank you for. Now I want you guys to think with me, what would you like to achieve one day? What do you want to be good at? Would you like to do well in school? Do you want to play for the first hockey team or learn how to play an instrument? Well, if you want to do that, you'll have to practice and you'll have to study for your tests and work hard each day. Maybe you want to be a good painter or you want to learn a new language. Or perhaps even you just want to be a good gamer. Even for those things, you'll have to practice and put in hard work every day. And when you take enough small steps, you'll eventually be able to go very far. Well, discipline is also important for following Jesus and growing closer to God. We need to be cross trainers, not cross trainers, but cross trainers. Just like you won't be able to run five kilometers by sitting on the couch and just holding out your running shoes in your hands. Following Jesus also takes discipline and effort. Following Jesus isn't a one time, one moment thing. Instead, it's something that you do day by day. 
Think about your best friend. What is his or her name? Now, you don't just have one play date or go out for ice cream or a movie once and then all of a sudden you have a best friend for life. No, you spend time day by day getting to know your friend and you do lots of things together. And that's how you build a relationship with your best friend. And just like we want our relationships with our friends to get better and we want to get to know them better over time, God wants us to get to know Him better and grow closer and closer to Him. So what does discipline look like in our relationship with God? The first part of our scripture reading today in 1 Timothy 4 said this, Have nothing to do with pointless and silly myths. Rather, train yourself in godliness or train yourself to be godly. Now, what on earth does that mean? And why is it so important that God tells us to do it? Well, godliness is important to fight against the lies of the devil, God's enemy, and to know God. All true things come from God. So if we want to know what is truth, we need to know God. And this is our biggest goal in life. That is to know God, enjoy Him. This is what you and I were made for. Right in the beginning of the Bible, we read that God made the first people, Adam and Eve, and they were in a perfect relationship with God. They knew Him. They were close to Him. But how did they get separated from God? How did the first sin enter the world? Well, with a lie. Remember the serpent who came to Eve? God gave Adam and Eve only one rule. And he made this rule because he loves them and he knows what is best for them. God said that they are not allowed to eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And if they do this, they will die. But the serpent lied to Eve and he said, surely you will not die. Instead, he said that they will become like God and know good and evil. And what did Eve do? She ate the fruit, gave some to Adam. And by disobeying God, Adam and Eve brought sin into the world. And ever since then, everyone sins. I sin and you sin. And the punishment for our sin is death. Because of our sin, we can't have a relationship with God. And this is because God is holy and completely without sin. And sin and holiness cannot live together. But here's the good news. God's plan from the very beginning was to rescue us from our sin. And He did this through Jesus. Jesus is the only one who lived a perfect life. He lived the life that Adam could never live. Jesus is God the Son, and He came into the world to rescue us from sin and bring us close to God again. Jesus did this by dying on the cross in our place. And now anyone who trusts in Jesus is forgiven by God and can live in a relationship with God forever. For now, if you trust in Jesus, there's still a battle going on against God and his enemy. And the devil is still against anyone who loves God. The enemy still wants to turn us away from God by spreading lies about him just like he did in the beginning. And in the weeks to come, we'll look at some of these lies. But this is why training for godliness is so important. We can take small steps each day to get to know God and his truth better and grow closer to him in our relationship. And then when we know truth, we can stand firm against the lies of the enemy. We can do this because God has already won the battle against evil through Jesus. Jesus did die on the cross, but he also rose again. And this shows us that Jesus has defeated sin and death forever. Now, how do we train ourselves for godliness? The first thing that I picked up in this verse was that it says, train yourself for godliness. And this is where discipline comes in. Now, if you trust in Jesus, you do get the Holy Spirit, who is also God. The Holy Spirit changes our hearts and makes us more holy, so more like Jesus. But 
we also need to take small steps each day to get to know God better and become more like Jesus. Just like a plant doesn't grow by accident, I need to water it and trim its edges. Our relationship with God also doesn't just grow by accident. With the Holy Spirit's help, we can do small things each day to see big change. The second thing is what I picked up is just to understand what we train. Do you think we train our bodies? Should we do lots of push-ups and lots of uh, burpees? Well, if that was true, if we had to train our bodies, then bodybuilders would be the most godly people on earth. But we need to train our spirits, exercise our spirits each day. Let's look at that verse one more time. Verse 8. It says, training of the body has limited benefit, but godliness is beneficial in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. So it is important to keep our bodies fit and healthy. It has some value, but our bodies won't live forever. Our spirits will. If we trust in Jesus, we will live with God and have a relationship with Him forever. So when we train our spirits and grow closer to God, we can enjoy Him now and for the rest of eternity. We can take small steps today to grow our forever relationship with God and be more like Jesus. So next week, we'll start looking at a few ways, but I need you to remember this. If you pray, read your Bible, and do everything you need to do to train your spirit, but your heart is not in the right place, it does not mean that you have been rescued. Your heart needs to love God and to want to be like Jesus. We can't do these things to be rescued or to impress God. We are only rescued when we have faith in Jesus because of God's grace. God's grace is a free gift from Him. So, if you're listening and you're thinking, I don't have a relationship with God, but I really want one. This is what you can do. You can admit that you have sinned against God, that you have disobeyed Him. You can believe that Jesus has died on the cross in your place and that He rose again. And you can confess that Jesus is your rescuer and the King of your life. But if you do follow Jesus already and you want to start training yourself for godliness more than you train yourself for anything else, you can pray with me now and also ask someone this week to be in your cross training squad. So let's all pray together. Dear God, thank you so much that we can learn about training our spirits so that we can be godly and know your truth and know you better and have a really good relationship with you. If there's something in our lives that we spend so much time on that's more important to us than knowing you and having a relationship with you, I pray that you will help us to know what that is and that you will help us to put you first. Help us in this series to learn everything we can about training our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today, kids. We're so glad you could come on this journey with us. Wasn't that great? So great. <laughs> awesome. So until next week, goodbye.